Are you going to leave America in 2030? I'm going to try and leave America in 2027. I read that somewhere. Why, why are you going to try and leave America in 2027? So I think the United States is going through a very difficult time right now. And I think most people understand that. Uh, we are a young country. No matter how much we think that we are the best in the world, we are actually going through the early part of our adolescence as a nation. And you can see it playing out every day in the headlines. You can see it in our, in our role in geopol uh, geopolitical events. You can see that we are we're suffering in terms of trying to identify ourselves. We don't know, do we want to be a real democracy? Do we want to be kind of a partial democracy? Do we want to treat everybody as equal? Do we not want to treat everybody as equal? We're, st we're struggling in the same way that you and I did through middle school, <laughs> right? My children mean the world to me. And what I want to do is give them a life where they have the choice to do anything they want to do. Unfortunately, I don't believe our country for the next five to 10 years is going to be the kind of country that allows children of today to choose and be whatever they want to be. I think our country has some growing up of its own to do before we really offer people equal access to opportunities. So for me, if I was my 11 year old son, when I turned 15 or 16 years old and I start to really care about something, I would like to be in a place where I can explore that thing. I don't think that's going to be in the United States. I think that's going to be in Europe. I think that's going to be in the Middle East. I think that's going to be in Latin America, where he will have all the advantages of the world outside of the United States. What do you think about what's going on at the moment with geopolitics as it relates to like China and the US? Um, there's a bit of a power struggle going on, and there has been, but a lot of people forecast that China is eventually going to overtake or maybe it already has, the US as the sort of global economic force. Um, are you preparing for that? Do you think it's going to happen? I think that there's, there's two realistic outcomes and there's one less realistic outcome. The most realistic outcome is that the United States and China continue to compete and reach parity, equality with each other. That's the most realistic outcome. Maybe the United States remains 10% bigger Maybe China gets 2% bigger economically, but they approach parity. They approach equality. I don't want to live in the United States when it loses so much status that another country reaches economic parity. Think about that for a second. The world is accustomed to one superpower. Once there are two superpowers, everything changes. There's two massive languages, and you're going to have to choose which language you speak. There's two currencies. Which currency are you going to save your, your money in? There's competing priorities. There's competing politics. There's equally massive, sophisticated militaries. When you are in one of those two countries, at the moment that they reach parity, you are in the most dangerous position because the number one target for China will be the United States. The number one target for the United States will be China. Right now, there's not parity, there's not equality. So the United States has to worry about everybody. And China doesn't really have to worry about many people at all. But as the, that equality gets closer and closer, there's more and more threat. Think about it in business terms. When you're the industry leader in your business, Google, you don't have mm -hmm. to worry about much. You have to worry about all the little guys, but nobody's really a direct threat. But as soon as somebody else rises to meet you, you have to worry about it. The leader used to be Yahoo, mm. right? Yahoo had to see what it's like to lose and gain parity with Google only to then be eclipsed, right? So most probable outcome, we reach parity. Second most probable outcome is that China does supersede us by small amounts, right? 5% GDP, 10% GDP. And the United States has to regain its momentum to try to gain back the edge. So now you have this cycle back and forth right? Where for five years, China is the leading GDP. For five years, the United States is the leading GDP. And you have this waffling back and forth, which makes you even less secure than if you were in direct parity. But that's, that's a scary place to be as well. You still have to lose all the influence to get there. And when you're there, you never know how long it's going to last. Do you think we're already engaged in a form of World War Three? Yeah, absolutely. I think World War Three is already happening. I think World War Three is not what people think it was going to be. I think people were afraid that World War III was somehow going to look like another World War II. Instead, World War III is a, a war of proxy nations. 
it's a war uh, it's a war where smaller third world countries are competing against each other and they're being funded by larger countries that are actually in conflict with one another ukraine and russia us is funding ukraine russia is obviously taking care of itself but the real conflict in ukraine isn't about ukraine it's about the west versus russia the same thing is going to happen with taiwan and china when the time comes that that china makes its biggest move on taiwan it's already made the small moves on taiwan when it makes its largest move on Taiwan, it's going to become a question of China versus the West and whoever supports Taiwan. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media App and BarGlobal.net. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. It does help support our productions. Also, please download the BG Media App to access the best works of the world's authors rendered in audiobooks, along with great experience through music, podcasts, and vodcasts. Thank you.